Good morning and welcome to our service of Holy Communion. Uh, just one notice about masks. Um, you're welcome not to wear masks, but we would prefer if people were able to, to wear them while we sing um, and projecting our voices out. Just uh, being a little bit cautious still uh, with the circumstances as they are. <clears throat> First of all, I have some bands of marriage to, um, to read. Um, <clears throat> I published the bands of marriage uh, between Connor Keary and Rebecca Dixon, both of the parish of St Andrew with St Luke, Stoke, Plymouth. Uh, this is, uh, if any of you know any cause or just impediment why these two persons should not be joined together in a holy matrimony, you are to declare it. This is the third time of asking. So let's just uh, bow our heads to pray. Heavenly Father, we give you our thanks and praise for the gift of friendship and marriage. And we pray especially for those who are preparing to be married in our parish and elsewhere at this time. And we pray particularly this morning for Connor and Rebecca, that God may bless them and lead them as they prepare for their wedding day and in their life together in the future. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Our first hymn is number 338, Come Down, O Love Divine. Seek thou this soul of mine.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And And also with you. So we pray together. Almighty God, to to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law, and the prophets. Lord, have mercy. This morning we'll be using the Kyrie eleison, the Lord have mercy responses for our confession. Compassion and forgiveness belong to the Lord our God, though we have rebelled against him. Let us then renounce our willfulness and ask his mercy by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We confess to you our selfishness and lack of love. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We confess to you our fear and failure in sharing our faith. Fill us with your spirit. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We confess to you our stubbornness and lack of trust. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive you your sins and make you holy to serve him in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The collect or special prayer for this third Sunday of Lent. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. We now have our readings, which you'll find on the other sheet that you have. The first reading today is taken from Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 1 to 9. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labour for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make you an everlast- with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you, shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way, and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon 
For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And as we join in with the psalm, please could you join with me in the bold type. So we say together, O oh God, you are my God, eagerly I seek you, my soul is a thirst for you. My flesh also faints for you, as in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So would I gaze upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. Your loving kindness is better than life itself, and so my lips shall praise you. I will bless you as long as I live, and lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. When, when I, I meditate you upon you my bed, and, and meditate on you in the watches of the night, for you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings will I rejoice. My soul clings to you, your right hand shall hold me fast. The second reading is from the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 10, beginning at the first verse. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and all were baptised into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them, and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not become idolaters as some of them did, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and they rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality, as some of them did, and 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test, as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents. And do not complain, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happened to them to serve as an example, and they were written down to instruct us on whom the ends of the ages have come. So if you think you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not, not common to everyone. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we join together in our next hymn, 592. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. the 
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, you O Lord. Lord. At that very time there were some present who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? Now I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse defenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? Now I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told them this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in the vineyard and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, see here for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig round it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ. Please be seated. Bishop and Biblical scholar Tom Wright uh, has written this about today's readings, which we have just heard. Just in case anyone thought the New Old Testament was all gloomy and the new cheerful, here are two passages of dire warning from the New Testament, preceded by a warm, redeeming invitation from the Old. Underlying both, is God's summons to accept his mercy and his way now, Why there is still time. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Unstated but powerfully implied is the message which Isaiah had in common with Luke's Jesus. 
the time may come when you will wish that you had. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. We are urged never to pass up an opportunity to connect with God while life is good, while there is time. For none of us knows what lies around the corner. We are not to take God's presence and blessing for granted. St Paul reminded the Corinthian Christians of the Israelites in the wilderness who had all the benefits that they do, who did just that, forget and perished. The truth is that God is eager to be found and eager to be called upon. Isaiah also wrote, Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. You that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labour for that which does not satisfy? Listen to me carefully and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me so that you may live. We need to take time for God daily and consistently in our lives. A regular time for prayer and reading our Bibles. Uh, you may already have something that aids you to, to, to do that, but you may be struck with horror thinking, what do I do with this massive great big book? Well, if you've got a smartphone, then tap into uh, 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 Google Play or whatever the iPhone one is um, and look up Lectio 365. Download the app and you'll get a reading for the morning and a reading for just get to, to read just before going to bed. And uh, if, re if you're a bit tired about reading, then you can actually hit a button and it's read to you. Um, Lectio 365, if you forget it, there's a copy of my sermon with, the, with that name in it to look at. Uh, if you don't have a smartphone, but if you've got a computer at home and want something a bit meatier to be accessed by a computer, is something like Scripture Union's Word Live. And, and if you sign up, they'll send you an email each day. Get the script of the sermon, there's and there's the address uh, to, to, to sign up for that. Or it could be that you prefer the old-fashioned way and want something physical in your hand. Well, Scripture Union, could, for instance, could provide you with that as well and send it to you for, for about four ninety nine, dollars I think. Again, the address is, is in, on, on the, the sermon notes. Um, or I can get you some to start in April. We need, if we're to seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near, we need to make that part of our daily lives. And there are plenty of things out there to help us, um, more so than the years ago. Seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. While there is time, while things are good, we are urged to seek God because there will be the inevitable times of trial and testing ahead. Times when God seems distant and we cannot seem to find him. A promise to be learnt in these good times, ready for times of difficulty, is the one we heard in the New Testament reading. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13. No testing has overtaken you that is not common 
to everyone. God is faithful and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. That was a verse I learned quite early on in my Christian life and, and a great one to have beside me. God does not promise an escape from hard and difficult times, but a way through them. When all seems black, God is still faithful and present and promises to give us the aid we need at that time. Corrie ten Boon, a Dutch Christian who endured a Nazi concentration camp because she aided Jews to escape deportation, wrote this. When I was a little girl, I went to my father and said, Daddy, I'm afraid I will never be strong enough to be a witness and a martyr for Jesus Christ. Tell me, said her father, when you take a train trip to Amsterdam, when do I give you the money for the ticket? Three weeks before? No, Daddy, you give me the money for the ticket just before we get on the train. That is right, my father said. And so it is with God's strength. Our Father in heaven knows when you will need the strength to be a witness or a martyr for Jesus Christ. He will supply all you need just in time. And so God brought Corrie through the concentration camp where her father and her sister were to become martyrs and she a witness. God gave the strength when it was needed. Before she died, Corrie's sister Betsy told her this. There is no pit so deep that God is not deeper still. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let's just be quiet together.
So we turn back to our order of service, to our second affirmation of faith. After the creed, we use the responses of the affirmation of faith. I ask you to stand to profess together the faith of the church. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This, this is, is our, our faith. faith. We, we believe and trust in one God, Father, Father Son and Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. So we sit on ill for our prayers. Lord, we thank you for the beautiful things that there are around us. I'll just put this butterfly down. It's still alive. However dark the times, we know that with confidence and trust, we can and must pray to our Father. Living God, deliver us from a world without justice and a future without mercy. In your mercy, establish justice. And in your justice, remember the mercy revealed to us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. We pray again for all those suffering in Ukraine, the babies and old people left behind in burning cities, those trapped under the rubble, all the shattered lives and those lying in crowded makeshift cemeteries and those whose bodies lie abandoned in the streets. We pray for your justice and your mercy Lord of all. And we pray for the Russian people, that they may be united in demands for peace. For Putin and Patriarch Kirill and all the leaders of this historic state, sometimes known as Holy Russia, that they may seek justice and mercy and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for all victims of war across the world, for those in the wars that are a present forgotten. In Myanmar, where tens of thousands, perhaps hundreds of thousands of Rohingya have died. In Yemen, where more than 300,000 have died. In the Syrian civil wars, where they reckon 350,000 have lost their lives. And in each war, there are countless numbers of injured and displaced, families bereft. Every life is precious to you, O Lord. Every person killed or maimed, a stain on your creation. We bring before you Lord of all, this war-torn world. Bear up the broken and hold them in your hands, whatever this day brings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Against the darkness, we give thanks for the welcome release of Nazarene Zahir Radcliffe and Anusha Aturi. And we pray for all hostages everywhere that they might find release from their captivity. We thank you, Lord, for these mercies. And we pray for continuing resolution and determination from all our leaders, that they may bear their burdens with care for all those whose lives they affect, that they may seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. 
We pray for all those children in this area who have died in recent years young, too young. From Tavistock recently, and the three in the churchyard out here, and the others. We pray for all of them and for their families. And we pray for all those in need this day, for the hungry, the sick, the lonely, the poor, the persecuted, all refugees, for all your precious children suffering, loved and known by name to you. Heal their wounds, Lord, and let them know your love. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. And we remember all those who have asked for our prayers. For Nick and Julie. For Margaret. Lynn Bristow. Peter Cameron. Dave. Edward Walter. Especially this week for Fran. For Becky, who continues to endure. For Alex, awaiting fresh treatment. For Noah and his family, Andrew, Claire and Elijah. For Shirley, Joyce, Paul, Dan and Susie, Jeanette and Roger. And today, for little Elizabeth. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. For ourselves, Lord, give us the grace to see the beauty of the world as well as the horror, to know that all is in your hands. You are our refuge and our strength. Let us have confidence that in the end, all shall be well in your hands and all manner of thing shall be well. Grant us all hope, and let us trust in your saving grace. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we turn from our prayers to our notices. Now, the first notice is one that comes up quite often. Please do sign up. Cake, cake is very welcome. So anybody who'd like to sign up at the back, I'm putting that at the back. That would be great. Thank you. Now, sorry, I just banged that. This week, um, we have the National Day of Reflection. Now, this is on Wednesday, and this week, there will be vases at the back of the church. So if anybody wants to remember anyone who's died, particularly in the last couple of years, and would like flowers to be put there for them in memory, please feel free to do so from tomorrow evening, probably Tuesday or Wednesday. If you want names read out, then if you leave a piece of paper with the name on beside your flowers, the names will be read out at the service next week. And also, if you are unable to come to church but have someone you want to remember, if you please let me know, I will bring flowers in that person's name for you. So that is this Wednesday. And I know that there are some people in the village who are looking to bring flowers. And after all of our prayers, I'm sure most of you know that we've got a cake sale in aid of Ukraine and also Mary's Meals, our Lent charity, here next Saturday, 10.30 to 12. Um, please come along and support. You don't have to eat cake. You don't have to buy cake or bring it. You can come and have a cup of tea. But we are trying to do something, however small, in all that there is going on around us. So that is next Saturday. Now, I do have one more important announcement to make. But before we get there, Jackie, did you have something you wanted to raise? Um, hi, I'm Jackie. I'm the TACT rep. As you probably know, TACT is the organisation of Tavistock Churches Together. 
Uh, so this is uh, just important that you know the uh, meeting that's on Thursday. So letter from TACT. This is churches look to respond to the Ukraine crisis together. So dear TACT friends, that's all of us of course. Um, TACT leaders and reps met first this week to discuss the Ukrainian refugee crisis and our possible response as churches together. We were so encouraged by the amount of interest in helping refugees from the churches locally. We don't know yet what the need will be in this area, but we are keen to look into a way to coordinate and support those from our churches who may be interested in hosting or supporting refugees coming here. If you would like to be involved in some way, and don't forget that doesn't have to be about hosting, it can be about um, providing transport, um, English language lessons, supporting the children, it, you know, it's, it's all, it's all uh, uh, needs our various support and skills. So if you'd like to be involved in some way, please come along to the meeting below or let your church leader know beforehand that you are interested in being involved. There will be a meeting at TMC, that's the Methodist Church just behind um, Abbey Surgery. Um, let me know if you don't know where it is, but TMC, that's Methodist Church, this Thursday, 24th of March at 2 p.m. So that's Thursday, 24th of March, 2 p.m. For all interested parties from churches, where you can hear from some who have experience of helping refugees to settle from other crises, together with thoughts on how we hope to work together in a coordinated way to help Ukrainian refugees. At this stage, we don't have clear answers, but are exploring the best way forwards. Thank you for your compassion, care, and willingness to help. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Jackie. And are you all waiting? Are you all on the edges of your pews? I hope you are because here I have an announcement, which is for Sunday the 20th of March. The Bishop of Exeter, patron and parish representatives are delighted to announce that subject to the completion of the statutory formalities, an offer of the post of priest in charge in the Tavy Mission community, comprising Tavistock, Gulworthy and Brentor, has been made to Reverend Matthew Godfrey, who is currently serving as a Royal Naval Chaplain, and that offer has been accepted. The Royal, Navy <laughs> the Royal Navy requires a lengthy notice period, which is possibly not surprising, which means that the licensing by the Bishop of Exeter will be at St. Eustatius Tavistock on Wednesday the 21st of September 2022 at 7pm. But we have actually got over the line at last. Okay, so, done. And quite a few of us will know Matt. Have met him, because he has actually, has he actually taken a service in this church? I, Christmas Eve, Midnight Mass. Midnight, right, Midnight Mass on Christmas. So we know Matt. So can we just bit, um, have a moment of quiet to pray for him? Um, and pray for the churches that he, that he comes to serve, well, he's already been one of us, so we give thanks to God for Matt and pray for him and his family, for all that has to be gone through at this time, that you may strengthen him and them and guide them and lead them and use them, Lord, in your service amongst us in the coming days and years. We give you our thanks and praise and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you like to stand? Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace and mercy. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And so we make a sign of God's peace to one another.
It's where we turn in our order of service to the Eucharistic prayer, the beginning of which there will be some different words for Lent. The Lord is here. Is good and is good us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ your Son. For in these forty days you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendour of your love and to prepare the world you have entrusted to us. And so, as we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels for ever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So we sit all near. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your Divine Majesty, renew us by your Spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. <coughs> and so let us draw near with faith to receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for us, and his blood which he shed for us. Let us eat and drink in remembrance that he died for us, and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. So we pray together. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. As we conclude, first of all, the colic for Lent. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And so we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And so we join together in our final hymn.
give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And so go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.